Morning from New York. Richard Miller here. Welcome to Never Not Here. And uh, I don't know, rather than doing an introduction, I'll just say please help me welcome Locke Kelly. Welcome, Locke. Hey, Richard. How are you? Really great. Good. Nice to we get a dynamite weekend. Yeah. So then this is part of it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's all part of it. Right. Life is really not broken up into into episodes. Really, it's just a yeah. continuous stream. We're just lifing. That's right. That's right. And then uh, <laughs> we can call it a weekend or whatever we want. Right. That's right. Yes. Yeah. In some ways, it's it's both at the same time. Simultaneously, there's a, kind of a dimension that is the now, which is timeless, but also within that, there's relative moments happening. And in some ways, that's kind of the confusion is that we've oriented ourselves more toward the little bits and toward the conditioning and looking through the thoughts, at the thoughts, through the mind, at just the relative level. And we haven't known that there actually is simultaneously a more subtle dimension of reality, a reality that's not broken up into bits, that's not separate, that's not... um, Conditioned. So I guess it's just <clears throat> nice to know that at any time, either of those are available. That's right. And then maybe what's happening is we're forgetting and thinking that only the bits part is available. And every once in a while, you get into kind of a cul-de-sac in the bits part, and then That's you think, right. "Oh, life has been hard for a long time." Yes. And then. Uh, if you can just be reminded, oh, there's that other part that's not in bits, and then realize, oh, all these bits are maybe arbitrary. Who knows? Right. You know? Yeah. And in some ways, um, you know, this thing, whatever we're calling it that we're talking about, <laughs> whatever the subject of this is, is in some ways just an ordinary part of life. It's not, it has been uh, taught as something esoteric or abstract or. Um, paradoxical at, at best because you know it can't be explained exactly in linear words in bits it doesn't fit in the bits it right doesn't fit in the bits. <laughs> so then that's a real paradox when you're in, in bit land that's right right, <laughs> right. and the, the bits are in it and the bits are not other than it oh yeah so the bits are in it can we yes. say it's underlying then that we the could say it's is a, underlying or whatever you could say it underlying and inherent and in between the bits, and in the bits, and as the bits, and yet the bits are not the orienting point of view. So they're not separate. So, I mean, often... I'll um, say that again, so we don't lose that one. The bits are not the orienting point of view. Yes. So so we're speaking in in bits of language here. We're speaking in words and concepts, and we're playing with kind of a frame, and we can do other things here to point... We are, we're also pointers. speaking in uh, uh, through a filter of recognition. That's right. And in some ways, you could say that at the same time, because these are simultaneous, it's almost as if the awareness that's subtler and prior and inherent is, is communicating and is here between us, and almost as if that inherent is using language, speaking to the ears of you and the audience, and then being understood by language, and then going back, or being then simultaneously understood, not stopping at the mind and coming back, but going through as, and then this deeper, more silent, uh, inherent, unconditioned awareness, uh, is what's knowing, and it doesn't have to be an either or, though. That's the thing that often, when we first discover this pervasive, unconditioned silence, we hang out in silence as opposed to words. But actually, words are hap- can be happening once we kind of recognize this inherent dimension of wakeful presence, awareness, or whatever word you want to call that. Whatever, but it, mainly it's the feel of that, then it's as if that is actually what's aware. And when that is aware, when being is seeing, when being can then use words or use the hand to move and 
grab a cup. And that is life. That's the way life is without going to a reflection of life, without reflecting on life. As soon as we reflect, we're one second out of direct perception. As soon as we reflect, well, now what is it that I'm, what did he just say? And as soon as you go into memory, we're out of the now. Right, right. So it's, that's the, that's the thing. Now, Let's from, slow down some yes, because, okay. you know, it's really, really rich. <laughs> yes. <laughs> really rich, you know, and I think we're saying some really, really good, really good things. Because okay. Talking about like, uh, oh, uh, surrounds. Yes. Between. Yes. Before. That's right. Cradling. Cradling. Cradling our bit, our bit, you know, right. and our bits. Again, and just to go over our bits, I guess there, it's, it's seeing the world as events, you know, seeing yes. that the, right. uh, recognizing. First it's recognizing, right? Yes. You recognize something. And then yes. you recognize this is a little different than that. Let's say that a that is just starting just now. Yes. Because it was this. Yes. Or, no, it was there. There is Now changing. it's this. Yes. Now, and there's a change. And so then because of that recognition, we say, oh, this is a starting point. Yes. Oh, this is a stopping point. Oh, that's an event. That's right. So then these are the overlays, or that's how we carve the bits. Well, here's here's right. Yes. So here's here's one. There's there's a couple different uh, definitions of non-duality. Just one more thing I'll okay, say, like please. the over, around, through, between, <laughs> all that stuff. And inherent. There's no and inherent. It's yeah. all inherent. You yes. know, because we don't want it. But we're always getting the idea over, around, and through. Are some are oh, through is over there, and all yes, around is over right. there, and As under if, is over there. That's right. But no. That's right. It's just inherent. That's right. So it, it is almost like um, time is like this. Time is like. So in some ways, I would say you can't be in the present moment. If we use the, the common understanding of what, uh, you know, what we define as present moment, because the present moments are coming and going. Present moment, present, 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 present. You can't get in it. The now is that awareness in which the present moments are coming and going. The now is also here, so it feels like yeah, let's say that in a, in a different way too, because in a way, okay, already that's bits, right? Because if you're saying bit, uh, now, uh, present, present moment. moments are coming and going, that's already carving them up into different moments, right? Yes. But they don't really have moments. There's only one moment. Well, it's Perhaps, but, you know. I well, mean, you can look at yes. it the other way. That's you know? right. It's no, no more true than there's lots of that's moments, right? That's right. But so, I mean, somehow yes. it's like a string. Yes. Right? It's just well, like a on and off, you know. Off is like dead. <laughs> And right. on is like a continuous change, right? Okay. Like well, that. well, let me let me say it. Cause so here's the thing: is that in some ways there's there's two seems to be two main ways of understanding non-duality. One is that the non-duality is that non-local, unconditioned awareness that we really are, and everything else is illusion. So that's not the one that I understand it. I I felt like that was true at one point, but in some ways it's that they're simultaneously happening. So. Sometimes they're called the two truths. Uh, there's an ultimate reality, which is timeless, and there's a relative reality, which is the bits coming and going. They're not two different reality. Ultimately, the bits are not real, ultimately real. The ultimate is ultimately real, the timeless. Now, yeah. now let's try to pull away from that and see if we can, you know, okay. because already but that's this becomes, making two. You're saying yeah. it's not two, but then you're saying one is real and one is not real. That's right. And blah, 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 you know, so it is. What we're trying to say is it's the same damn thing, right? That's it's right. It's absolutely the same. Not even two heads of the coin, you know? Not Don't even flip it. It's That's just right. there, you know? And so then it's not that one's more real and one's... One no. may be more flexible. Yes. One is more generous. One's more primary. More, Yeah, one's more primary. And one is more generous that it, allow, it allows all kinds of points of view. Right. You know, we can call it that way. Instead of calling it yes. an illusion. That's right. Try that on. Let's just try Let's that try on. That Generosity, on. you know. Yes. Like existence is generous, allows for six billion interpretations. Yes, that's right. Something like that. Yeah. And how we can, if there would be a way to language it that does not really uh, somehow subtly indicate the, a separation, you know. Yes. Like the real world and the unreal world. That's the, right. Or like, uh, I love it when you say inherent, because when we yeah. say under, over, around, and through, That's between, right. you know, those are places where we're trying to localize, you know. That's right. And uh, and a lot of people get caught in that. They do. Yeah, and they're getting caught in the... in the Getting there, it's called. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Getting there is time. Seekerhood. Yeah, or the seeker. But see, even the, even whatever that is, when the, when you go from seeker to, oh, I've never been the seeker, 
you still then you can hang out or get caught in the pure awareness, as if, and then uh, then it's almost like swinging the duality from uh, perceiving as if I'm I'm the seeker looking for something, and then you see through it. Oh, there's never been a seeker, but then you can fall too far back into the pure awareness and call the other illusion. Whereas in some ways, what I'm saying is that it's almost like realizing when you realize that who you are is not a thing, you kind of lose the fear of death. But then when you realize that no thing is also appearing here with others relatively in this world, then you lose the fear of life. Then you land here without fear. And Is that what you meant by falling too far back into pure yeah, awareness? It's, that's right. That's the fear of life. That's right. One you is still the fear can of death be, and then one yeah. is the fear of life, right? Yeah, something like that. So life is just like manifestation, or it's yes. just like interpretation, or it's just yeah. like for a human, anyhow, it's a, it's like a, a, a memory and a, and a recognition as something that you know. It's a knowing, yeah. yes. which other animal forms probably don't have a knowing. That's right. So, so in some ways, you could say there's two kinds of knowing going on, and this shift of identity is just is kind of a shift of perception. It's a shift of a kind of knowing and a shift of identity. So the identity, that being, knows in a different way than the conceptual knowing or the uh, dev- reflective knowing or the dualistic knowing. The, from being, as being, another kind of knowing is what is Some that. Some call it like understanding or something like that. Or wisdom. Or, yeah, wisdom or something. Yeah. You know, but it's not a knowing, like a cognition knowing. It's not a cognition. And mm-hmm. that becomes, I found that in, you know, in working with so many students, that that becomes the, the big transition, yeah. is feeling that, kind of knowing, that right? knowing that is, has always been knowing that way. So and, what could that knowing be? <laughs> it has to be coming home, right? It's, it's coming it has home to be coming home. Yes, it has to be a recognition because there's no other kind of... That's right. Knowing doesn't, it doesn't construct in that's any right. other way, you know. It either constructs as a cognition or it's, it's like a, Direct. It's a coming home. It's, yeah. It's, it's like recognizing Godhood or coming yeah. home or something. That's right. And then, you know, being able to hang out there, hang out in that knowing, as that knowing... So at, really it's yeah. not hanging out, it's they're just not running yeah, off, right? That's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's good. There's no way to hang there's out. There's no there. way to You're hang already out. already there, right? There's so nobody then, hanging out, right? Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> then it's just like what's the then we can we actually look into running off? What is the running off? That's right. And, then and that's the study of the mind or what is that? Well that that inquiry becomes what I call natural inquiry. So it's almost like most of the time is spent uh, with who am I to discover this. But once we are that there's now um, a uh, marinating or a, a, a kind of surrendering back and appearing new each moment uh, of this curiosity of this new kind of knowing that starts to feel the arising or the detoxing of the old systems that are almost kind of coming up to, to re-engage or re-call us back to the other points of view. I like how you say detoxing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. So it's it's really there's there's a you know there's a continual uh, process. Uh, this awakening is not a thing. It's not a goal. Nobody gets there. So I'll try to say it in the paradoxical language. So in some ways there is this uh, natural, unnameable dimension of unconditioned awareness, reality. That has always been here. That isn't coming and going. It isn't created or developed. However, there is simultaneously this human and this world dimension of appearance and relative reality that's existing and non-existing, coming and going. That we developing, developing, uh, sophisticating, sophisticated, uh, even evolving, evolving. Even right. evolving. That's where it all comes from. Otherwise, yeah. it'd be fixed. You know, yeah, nothing would right. move. It Otherwise, wouldn't budge. That's Someone right. said, "If ten." If 5 after 10 was real, it would never be 6 after 10, right? (laughs) That's right. It's got to be relative or Or, or illusion, you know? Or Or illusion. All those bad things, you know, illusion. Illusion, 5 after 10 is a (laughs) rat. But but in some ways, it's almost like the the simultaneous or the both-and happening. So that uh, when 
this unconditioned dimension is recognized because that's what's not been on our map. It's not on the Western psychology map. It's not on you know, the map of, it's come in maybe a little bit more with quantum physics or something, the, the metaphor for it, but that's, that's... Okay, let's say it again now. What, what, what should we call it? The unconditioned? Well, that's, or you know, you I mean, it? I can say the to a, anybody, who's, anybody who's watching, choose your favorite language for it, because there's, there is no, you know, if the mind is going to do something with it. It's, it's unconditioned. It's uh, not a thing. It's no thing, but it's empty. It's awake. And it, in, it it's not separate. And so, it's always here. And it's here, always here. It's always been here. It's not. It's it, it's usually been in the background because the other dimension has been primary, and we can operate. So it's not primary. It's just been in our attention. In other that's words, that's right. Our in our. In other words, we that's what we call the wandering. That we were, I was saying, could we investigate our wandering? Yes, that's right. And and, and what's the magnetism toward it? Is it? It's just like a inertia or a habit. Uh, you know, you can call well, it. Well, it's more than that, I think, because you can do a lot of meditating and it never gets to the inertia. <laughs> life goes on when you get out of the meditation. No, I'm saying that, cushion, right? that life is the inertia. That yeah. I mean, the habit of looking through the mind and to the mind is something that we've developed. Uh, I don't want to get into first causes of anything. Oh, yeah. Because that it, it's all speculation. I, I, I could I, I could put out a theory then, you know, okay. since you don't want to. <laughs> but anyhow, it seems to me like it's a mechanism for... Uh, hold on a few. I yeah. pulled out my mic. I want to see if... Yeah, I did pull it off. Okay. I thought I felt something pop there. I could put out a theory of... <laughs> you know, uh, I would say that uh, we're endowed with a mechanism that, uh, that seeks our safety. And that yes. as long as we believe that we're at risk, for whatever that belief might be, right. we might be totally paranoid. Okay. You know, but as long as we're doing that, that mechanism will function perfectly. Good. It'll pop up ideas of like, That's oh, right. you could do this, you could do that, you could hide That's in the right. cellar, you know, build yeah. a bigger castle, That's uh, right. you know, get some more money, do this, go on a spiritual search, uh, you know, it'll give you all kinds of things as long as you believe yes. that you're <clears throat> somehow not whole and that somehow yes. you could, there could be another possibility from now that uh, I could be living in a now that was was more rosy, you know, yes. somehow it would be like this or that. And then your mind is your obedient lieutenant. Okay, I'll go that's get right. it. Yeah. <laughs> good, so we'll go with your theory. Yeah, Okay, thanks. we'll start with... It. <laughs> <laughs> that feels <real> good. <laughs> <laughs> you can start with any language, any theory. Now, okay, so now we've got that theory. So all I would say that's a little different maybe is that it's not about whether that's arising. It's about who it's arising to. So let's say the, the survival instrument and the mental instrument are just continue. They, that's fine. In fact, it's not about stopping them or... Uh, either oaring them. It's about let that happen. And you need, you know, if you're living anywhere, you need the survival instinct. You know, if something comes at you, like here we are in New York. So if, a, you know, one of the bicycle messengers is going by and, and comes near you and says, hey, and you've got to be able to jump back, like in a second. So thank God that works. However, who are those arising to? When they are arising to themselves, or when they arise, the mind arises to itself, or there's parts of the self that become points of view and take over the manager role, then we get this suffering mode because we're on a kind of a, we're just on a chessboard dimension of reality moving pieces around. The manager. Well, that's kind of maybe what I call this belief in insufficiency, belief in neediness, belief in, uh, belief in not wholeness, which is the individual. Yes. You know, if I'm not whole, then I'm something that needs to get moved toward whole. But if I'm whole, I'm everything. I'm not the individual anymore. Yes. The only thing is, it has nothing to do with belief or not belief. Oh, yeah? In other words, it's really, um, it's like first, first level, the words are pointers. Then you can believe, I could believe I'm whole, or I believe I'm not whole. Either one, in some ways, can only make a moment of, of change. Then you can have experience of whole or not whole. Even that is not there yet. It's really that which is already whole. That which is already whole is already here. That which is already whole is already aware. That which is already whole and has never been other than whole that can be with that that's not whole or broken or coming and going. 
and doesn't mind exactly what it is that comes and goes and is not whole and is not separate even from that, that can know itself. That is knowing itself. And the obscuring or the habit or the addiction or the pattern or the inertia, in some ways awakening is really just about the relative level dominance that can relax and reveal the primary that's been here all along. Right. No, that's clear. They yeah. can relax. We're not, and I guess we're always talking like, is there a mechanism to that, or is there some understanding that can help with that, or so, in some knowing? Is there some yes. knowing? Because we were yes. using understanding and seeing more for that coming that's right. home thing, you know. That's and right. that's kind of what I was saying by real believing, because until yes. you have that, I mean, you're still believing that you're, you know, I mean, believing. I didn't say it was like an all time right, right. or something like that, but more like. My, well, how I really, really, really think the world works. Like, what is what is real, you know, right. is my belief, you know. I believe I need to fend for myself, and I believe New York is uh, vicious in certain neighborhoods or something like that, <laughs> or I believe, you know. Yeah, so believe it, it believing, that, believing that comes from direct experience. And not even direct experience, but the direct seeing, re- seeing of being. Yeah. Be- being has its own kind of knowing and its own kind of seeing. As, as being, there's no doubt what is. If, if uh, the ego is looking out of your eyes, if the mind, if it's, the amazing thing is that we can do this other thing. The amazing thing is that we can do this thinking about, thinking about, reflecting about, uh, that we can actually live a life like that because it's yeah, like Yeah, it seems weird. amazing, but I mean, it's like seamless. <laughs> it, it's seamless. It is totally seamless. And, it, and it's, it's an incredible strong habit that we've kind of been, our culture and our development and our level of, uh, uh, has been reinforced. Uh, so my, my, my experience has been lately that I believe that this awakening is a normal level of human development that people can't that it's it, it's inherently natural it's always here it can recognize itself that's been and there's been hundreds of ways that people have fallen into it through and you can't say there's one door one way one method but there's no doubt it, it's learnable and teachable and just as something like music when the first people played music they tried to you know, strum a string, and people say, oh, it's magic, oh, it's given by the gods, oh, it can't be explained, or nobody could ever teach that. And then eventually, they wrote down notes and, and, and taught it. And there's no, no doubt that, you know, you couldn't say what music is like. You know, well, define music. It's unexplainable. No words could describe it. Yes, same as awakening. This, this can be, when it's demystified, taken out of the uh, esoteric, which is just so. In some ways, it's in its infancy right now, of learning and teaching. Well, this is amazing what you're yep. saying. It's yep. totally amazing. And I, it's kind of the way I, it, I didn't start off that way, but I was. I had a dream that maybe I would kind of start off that way, you know? Because okay, you said this awakening process is a natural thing, and, it, and yep. you believe it's a learnable and teachable. Absolutely, something like that. Yes. So then I was going to start out saying something like, okay. Uh, so many people seek a career, some mm-hmm. get it and some don't. Yes. Many people seek an education, some some get some level of education, some exceed farther. Some right. Many people seek a family life and a, and a mate and stuff, and yeah. some find it and some keep getting divorced. Yes. And many people seek some kind of awakening or enlightening, enlightenment right. or something like that, and some seem to move toward it and others seem always to be frustrated. Yes. And then some people that never even seek it uh, somehow are bombed in That's on right. it. And then, I mean, uh, what it, <laughs> <laughs> does it help, I was going to ask, you know? Does it help to seek it? or I mean, what is it, you know? Well, I mean, yeah, so here's the paradox. So here we are again. Uh, as you're saying, I mean, the first, the first thing is, is it available to all kinds of people? I think that's been proved just by the examples you gave. People fall into it. They didn't have... The people who were, you know, Eckhart, let's use Eckhart Tolle, was suicidal and, you know, discovered it. So, obviously, you know, he wasn't seeking it and he fell in. People who are educated, uneducated, of all, of all uh, you know, gender, race, culture, have fallen into it. So, that means it's available. Then, the next thing is, some people who have not sought it have found it. 
Some people have sought it, have found it. Now, the paradox, I think, that a lot of the non-dual uh, teachers are saying is they're pointing that the seeker is not the finder. But that doesn't mean that it can't be learned or taught because it's here. It can't be maybe unlearned. The, that the unlearning can't lead to the discovery and that there are ways uh, for different types of learners or unlearners that are and doorways uh, that this can be discovered because it's natural and available and inherent and uh, and the, and there are those who have learned it. I think it's the teaching of it that's the problem, not, yeah, no, not I the learning. I do too. I do too. I like you. <laughs> <laughs> the seeker is not the finder. No, let's yeah, say the, seeker's not the, the seeker is that's not right. the finder. The seeker is not the finder, but you can't stop there. I mean, that's like right. you know, a lot of the you know, you discover that oh, the seeker can't find it. It's already here. It's you know, oh, the one who is trying to get there isn't here at the getting. Okay, great. That's step A. <laughs> now keep going. It's like you know, that's that's not enough to say that. Then, now what's here? Now who's here? Now what's that relationship of this being that's not the seeker? So it's almost like there's a not knowing, and then the, not, then the new knowing. And the new knowing is coming from who? No one. Okay, but then you can't, you can't do a dualistic thing. Okay, well, I realize I'm no one now. No, you nope. don't. Yeah, because, that's just a, a yeah. bunch of dribble. Because in some the ways, seeker yeah. is not the finder. One, right. one thing you can go to is that the seeker is not a serious guy. Because seriously, right. serious, serious, <clears throat> it's not gonna, it's really not going to do it. So it's a game, yeah. and finding is somewhere. It's a, like an Easter egg hunt, but this uh, Easter egg is really in a weird place. <laughs> right, right. And the, fi- and the seeker is not going to get it. But anyhow, That's right. somehow, That's there right. we are, knowing that all this stuff, looking somewhere else, you know. Uh, maybe on my married three or four years ago, I had to, I was when I used to introduce these shows, when I first started my first and second show, you know, I, was, I figured I had to have some kind of a, a spiel to, to introduce it. And I was say, saying, you know, we've looked everywhere. We're actually pretty good at looking, you know, yeah. we've studied, yeah. we've done this, we've done that, you know, gosh, where's the only place we haven't looked? Maybe we're standing right on top of it, right? Yeah, <laughs> that's right. So, so in some ways, it, it really is about um, how to look, where to look, what to look for, and ultimately who's looking. And that who's looking and that way to look could be uh, realizing that there never was a looker. But even that is a pointing (laughs) that is a method. It's a no method method. But it is going from a conceptual way of knowing, a knower and a seeker, to that which is already here and already knowing. So in other words, it's, it's, it's almost like the feeling of it to get the first glimpses is almost like, you know, those um, pictures like the old woman and the young woman, where you look at it and you see the old woman and then you just look again and now you see the, oh, it's a, it's a young woman or the, the chalice and the two faces. You see the chalice. Oh, there's two faces. Oh, there's a chalice. Oh, there's two faces. It's like a shift into often what's called silence no thing, space, open space, peace, connectedness. Those qualities show up, and then don't if you don't pick up the next thought to orient. If you don't go back up to the thought, if you don't go down to sleep, if you don't go to memory in the past, if you don't go one moment into the future, you all of a sudden that which is here that's always been looking and knowing starts to, at first it feels like a gap, like you're, like you're waiting because we're so used to orienting by thought. And, and we, we can't even check with the knower for a second opinion. We have to kind so of... So waiting is an important agreement. Something like that. Not doing, waiting, not you know, and hanging out somewhere where you know the cognition is kind of broke down, like yeah, really not, not really looking expecting to it to uh, to come and pick up the the thread or anything like that. Yes, yes, something like that. So, so, but it's this, you know, it's it's using the word like okay, there is something that's already knowing. The seeker is not the one that's going to find it. So that's why some of the preliminary practices calm the mind. 
uh, you know, yoga calms the nervous system, meditation calms the mind, focuses the awareness. They're just preliminary. Yeah, even good but diet not, and stuff like that, you know, yeah, something that's that right. makes you more centered, yes. you know, yeah. good diet, less toxins, organic, or any of those things you're doing, you yes. know, are like useful. Yeah, they're useful, preliminary. Loose, useful preliminary, not necessary. But they're showing you kind of like, okay, don't go to the agitation, don't go to the movement that's not where. So maybe when the movement is less, it's, you're still in state of mind. It's just saying, okay, now now, look to the looker. Now drop, unhook awareness from the mind and let it drop. Is that kind of automatic? Could that be, be kind of automatic whenever you hit a kind of a calming state? Yes, if you're a it could to... be. It could be, but not necessarily. Uh -huh. In other words, the preliminary practices are preliminary. That's it. They can be helpful, they're not necessary. That's what a lot of this direct path is saying. They're saying that many people can find it through no practice, some practice, but the key is at some point, awareness has to, is gotta be the primary aware being, not thought, not the thinker, not a new knower, not a new self, small self, not a point of view. So it's a boundless feeling, but within that, it doesn't mean you have to stay open because within that, there can be closing and opening. So it's not just the quality, but it's, it's this learning how to feel your way into, but the only thing that can feel into is awareness itself. Only awareness can know awareness, and awareness... Uh, can know everything else. It can know thought, feeling, sensation. And it already is doing that. It's just that we're caught in the, in the movements of the body and the mind, and we're looking on that chessboard to try to move the pieces around to create, to find out who we are. And yeah, caught that. in the movements. Now, yes. why are we caught in the movements again? And that's what I was yes. saying. It's a belief that's that right. we're incomplete. So then that that's means, right. and then our, our movement machine is, is given full license. Yes. To, to take over. That's right. Because it's supposed to be, look, I'm the guy that my, my job description is it's salvation, I'm saving you, so yes. let me take care of it. That's right. Yeah. And so, and so that, you know, so changing the belief is, is um, you know, sometimes in Tibetan Buddhism they call it instead of a philosophy or belief, they say, all right, let's talk about the view. What is the view? Okay, the view is, the view from awakeness is, it's already here. The awakeness is already here. You don't need to move pieces around. You don't need to create any state of mind to get there. But the awareness has to, and then you could like fill in the blank. There's, there's, there's no, it's already looking, but we're habituated to look to thought and through thought and create points of view. That doesn't have to be the way. There's, a, there's another way, and then there's, a, there's ways to invite or point, or unlearn, or let go, or surrender, or you know, you can go through the door of love, you can go through the door of, but the key is that the identity shifts. The awakening is a shift from this point of view identity to an awake natural beingness. From there, it's clear, oh, this was already he always here. I like the preliminary, preliminary steps, you know, I'm just trying yes. to see what, you know, what could be the, you know, because we're talking about a lot of different ones, yes. which could be like meditation, could yes. be like yoga, <clears throat> could be like good diets and, you know, health habits and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, lately, we've been talking a lot uh, on and off about uh, some kind of a behavioralism or something mm -hmm. like that, or where you're just noticing your story when your story is anxious. Yes. And anxiety ridden, and every, all your calls to actions are anxious. And yes. if those, if there are any moments in your life where yes. your story is contented, yes. and your calls to action are content or just kind of like That's happiness right. or based or joyous, you know, playful. Yeah. yeah. If you're ever like that, you know, and those that would tend to also do the same trick as the meditation and the other things is just yes. to, to calm all those th that that. Yes. Anxious vibration, I guess, yes. and from that space, maybe. Uh, if you don't need anything, if you're not needy, of course, that must mean you're kind of like, for the moment at least, okay, which means kind of like whole, you know, like, you know, 
I'm, I feel complete. I'm fat and sassy. I mean, wow, this is great, you know. <laughs> and then, and then in that way, the, your whole nervous system can kind of go down, and then, then it can be maybe obvious that you're in that preliminary state. Then you've kind of yes. passed that first threshold, and so then if you yes. can notice uh, every once in a while that when you're uh, an anxiety motion and when you're not, maybe there's a possibility to say, hopefully, with that, I've done that enough. Not, you know, not change forever, but just for this moment, let me just try to kick back. And yeah, then so the, those are the opportune moments or the chances to kind of like that's right. have a deeper scene. Yeah, so that's traditionally why the preliminary practices have been there. Now, <clears throat> the direct path will say, okay, whether you do those or you don't, the key is, okay, so the, the you know, the, the muddy, there's a muddy pond, and you do preliminary practices to calm so that now you have a clear uh, more clear, pond. more clear. However, right? the key is those. It's still a state of mind. It's still a, a state of okay. I feel really good. That's still not being. That's just a calm body, a calm mind. That's not it. The awareness now has to not look to any state. It already isn't looking to any state. The awareness that's aware of states that come and go, that's not separate, has to become the. Pr- the primary looker. Now, it already is the primary looker, but the obscuring tendency of, of the creation of calm state, agitated state, relaxes, or the by not doing, the background becomes the foreground. The background awareness, which in some ways, one of the problems with awakening is that it's not motivated to wake up in a relative way because it's okay with everything as it is already. So it's not pushing to wake up. No, I didn't quite get that. Okay. Or do you so, need so, to push to wake up or, so the, or is it the, uh, well, the see energy? The, see, this is the paradox. Counterproductive. It's almost like the ultimate reality is already accepting everything as it is, which includes identification and not identification. Yeah, it always will. So no it matter will. what, you know. <laughs> so, so it's not motivating the waking up. Oh, yeah. So the the ultimate is not trying to wake up. Oh, I got it. So just uh, <laughs> the assumed being, the assumed uh, personality is trying to wake up, and when he's calm, he doesn't really try anymore. Yeah. So in some <laughs> in some ways, like the paradox is like the that which is already awake isn't trying to wake up in a relative way. We're caught in this obscure, and the relative seeker is trying to wake up. It can't wake up. So here's our bind. Oh, yeah. So it's almost like the right where the ultimate. And the relative meet, like often in the formless comes into the form, is what often is called heart's desire. Uh, surrender, surrenders back. Heart's desire is like forward, uh, letting you know, letting be. Uh, background to the foreground. Something right there is it was is what seems to be the the. Uh, the point where the mind isn't working and the seeker isn't working and the, the, the meeting, and we're not totally back into pure formlessness where you don't know, you know what's going on, but there's almost like this dance. Oh, yeah. So then uh, there's something. Okay, let's just say it again. Now. Yeah. Like, okay, there's the preliminary practices. Yes. The pond steals and the yeah. water gets clearer. Yes. Whether that so happens. Then, or, yeah. yeah, more or less. It does to some degree. Okay. You know? Some degree, there's some clear, yes. uh, clearness, you know. And so then somewhere uh, we can just dissolve in that and then wake up later and it'll be cloudy. Or somehow we can hang out somewhere in this not asking for another interpretation. Yes. Somehow not yeah. really going to the future, the past, not really right. being anxious. And we're I guess it's a hanging out of like at the edge of a known mind or something. Or, you know, it's not even really that. It's just mind is relaxed. Yes. Because we've done our preliminary <clears throat> states, whatever they were, or enough of them, so it makes a difference. Or not. Yeah. There's, there's no need to do, that's the thing, there's no need to do preliminary practices. They can be helpful for some, but yeah. they're not necessary because the, the beingness is so vast, so powerful, so subtle, so inherent, it's it doesn't need it doesn't need to have a necessarily a calm mind in fact you know again uh, just to use Eckhart Tolle as an example 
but he was in the opposite of preliminary states. He, he was in uh, suicidal mind, the most agitated mental. So, and then it broke. He broke through. Yeah. So then that's kind of like a hard way to do it, you know. Yes. So that's the other way. So that can explode. So you're standing right. on top of the bridge. You climbed all the way up. That's right. You're about ready to launch yourself, you know. Yes. And then, I mean, uh, that's the other state, right? That's right. Even if it's metaphorical, it's, it's, it's what it is. And that's the other right. one is kind of, okay, but so, so, so that, that is yeah. kind of damaging to the world usually, though. Because, like, I mean, I mean, at one time, we could say, let those people do it. If they make it, they make it. If they don't, they don't. Right. But now they That's might right. be holding on to a rocket launcher or something like That's that. That's right. And taking out some thousands of people. That's right. Or knocking out a hotel or something. And, uh, yes. <laughs> you know? <laughs> it yeah. doesn't seem, the world doesn't seem that resilient anymore. Yes. Yeah. So, so I mean, it's not, suicidal is not the recommended uh, path. Yeah. But to work on the other it, hand, you know. On the other <laughs> hand, if, it, if it's happening, it may be. Well, a lot of people are already trying to calm themselves, but somehow, yes. let's just say where they yeah. go wrong because there's yes. already a big crowd yeah. like that. So, it's, yeah. in some ways, it almost shows that there's, yeah. a, there's a continuum that those who are suicidal and most agitated, and some have woken up when they've done classical traditional right. teachings now in the middle is where most yeah. people Does are anything you don't in the have middle? to you don't that's where that's <laughs> nobody where, wakes up in the middle right no that's the, people do wake up in the middle and that's where we are that's where most of this direct path teaching is it's saying regardless of where you are what job you're doing where you live it's here this which you are has always been here can be realized and recognized by itself in any moment it often starts as small glimpses but it may just like the bottom of a, of, a, of a water bucket. It just could drop out and the background becomes the foreground or the, what was subtler becomes more dominant. And that, that's the pointing. Okay, now, wait yeah. a minute, because you're saying like, okay, it may just happen this way, the bucket yeah. may be just fall out or at yes. the bottom and so on and so on. But now we're not talking about teachable and learnable. Well, right? We're just talking about a happening, which happens and which, you know, we can document. Okay? Yes, yes. So then even the other part is not really teachable and learning, standing on top of the bridge ready to launch yourself because no, right. it's hard to catch a person when That's he's right. up there, you know, yes. or it's hard to motivate people to go up there when they don't really feel it. Yes. So the only ones we can be learnable and teachable seems to me to be the, to the ones that are trying to do a little meditation and trying to find, clear, clarify the waters a little bit. Yeah, or any, somehow just yeah. to teach them and train them that uh, when you get there, that's not it. Yes. You but, know, and then how yeah. do, how do I just hang out there and, and how to how to, is it, you can't. The seeker is not the finder. Yeah, the seeker is not the finder. But people who just walk in the door, let's say people, like often I have like uh, girlfriends, boyfriends, spouses of, of people who have been seekers and they're just like dragged into one of these meetings. And first time they've heard anything like this, they're not there for, all right, sure, you know, what are we going to do tonight? Oh, we're going to go to one of those things. They arrive through us. Uh, uh, environment, teachable, learnable, pointing out within an hour, they are speaking from that. They have recognized uh, who they are. They're speaking from there about that. And at least that glimpse is clearly, uh, they've clearly shifted. So that's what I'm saying. It's teachable, learnable. It's not a once and for all thing usually. Uh, there seems to be kind of almost like principles, just like development of uh, any uh, integration. It's not that the ultimate reality develops, but the interaction between the formless and the form, that mixing of that, the rewiring and the, um, the uh, you know, kind of coming together of that, almost people start almost like a baby Buddha where they real, recognize and they're like, I can't talk right now, but I know who I am. And they, they say, well, what else do you have to say? Nothing, you know. And they're like a little baby. And then they learn to speak without going back to the mind or creating a point of view. They learn, and there's almost like what seems to be like a head awakening. And then often people go into more of a body awakening and then emotional awakening and then a kind of a, open-hearted awakening where there's more kind of waking out so it's like a waking in a waking up a waking in and then a kind of waking out and then the will awakens and kind of the core awakens and the root awakens and 
you know, it doesn't have to happen in a linear way, but there seems to be an unfolding that's very clear, almost like we've observed the development of human beings growing up. There's like a waking up thing that happens. It's a process. The detox process I talked about starts happening when you are hanging out. You don't have the point of view of an ego identity. You also don't have the ego defenses. So the, the stuff that's been repressed starts coming up. And if there's a, you know, no big surprise attitude toward that, it starts to, you know, shake and bake. It starts to clear out if you don't create a manager or a defender of that, but let that appear to this intelligent, knowing beingness, it starts to um, integrate all that. If you don't make a manager, there must be some feeling of safety or something about it. it. It doesn't feel that... You know, it's like intriguing enough and not yes. risky. It doesn't feel risky enough. But that's it. I mean, how does it happen that a manager doesn't, if you don't use, that's a big word you said, if you don't yeah. create a manager. That's right. If you don't go back. Because the manager entities are call, are kind of calling you back, almost like, you know, uh, you know, t- what about me? Don't you think we should have, you know, defended? Yeah, just check there. Just yeah, check, check here. here. What, what about this? Here. Okay, right. I can help you. I've done it before. But the, 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 the dimension of, of the true beingness, the awareness beingness, when it's here, is the reason they call it often, you hear the word ground of being, is it feels like people report, uh, oh, there's a safety. Oh, there's a, uh, you know, I feel at home. I feel taken care of. I feel connected to everything. I feel like there's no threat that I'm not afraid of dying, I'm not afraid of anything that's arising, is can't hurt me. So that, there is this, just as you say, there is a dimension of a new kind of safety. It's not the safety of, of fight or flight or of the body-mind safety, but it's a safety of being. It's like that, a safety of I'm not that. Yeah, that's right. Yes, that safety of I'm not that is is such an incredible clear, consistent, reported, um, it's instant, real experience. It's instant, too. You it's know? instant. It's instant. It yeah. doesn't have to develop. Once you're no. not that, That's you're right. safe. That's right. You're <laughs> safe. <laughs> That's right. No doubts, no regrets, no, doubts. no nothing, right. you know. That's right. <laughs> no wishing, like, why did I waste all my time, or nothing like that. You no, know? that's I mean, right. There's just nothing. That's right. Safe. And that's yeah. that's the amazing thing. And that, so there, that, that can detox. That safety that knows it can't be hurt, that knows it can't be destroyed, that is knows it's not made of, that knows the, that the, the arising of states and the intensity of emotion are, are actually just returning to life force as they return can then allow this whole system, both the beingness and the humanness, to live this life. And it becomes like a ongoing journey. And it's this, it's this that I think is going to become uh, a normal part, uh, you know. Um, <laughs> that's a beautiful, that's a beautiful um, insight, you yeah. know. But I mean, okay, we said so many things. Yeah. Like you said, like, uh, uh, we talked about the awakening can go in different directions. Yeah, it can go right. up, down, in, out, in, out under, right. root. And it does know, go both. Love, heart, yes. uh, uh, emotions. Yeah. And, okay, then it can't seem to be separated or in stages or staged out or something like that. Yeah. But then let's just say, well, what are we exactly talking about? Because we, we made several different in, introductions because when you said people could, spouses could just come off the street yeah. and they could just click with something, you know? Yes. And then you were, as I was thinking, you were saying that, uh, that it's not permanent. So necessarily, I mean, it just, in other words, uh, then they go home and then their normal routine picks up, but they think it's not the way I thought it was. You know, something's right. changed basically, but you know, I'm still the same guy doing the same thing, right. thinking the same thoughts. Right. But I know there's something more. Yes. At least that part has been kind of that's right discovered. That's you know. right. But I mean, uh, what are we saying in these stages, and who's doing it? Because so many people are just into frustration and saying, I, right. whatever I'm doing, I meditated 40 years, and you know, yes. I like it, but anyhow, yeah, they're the same guy, right? Yeah. So, so I mean, I think yeah. a lot of the, those who have um, talked about initial awakening. Uh, and have stayed with it, and it's unfolded. It keeps unfolding. I mean, there's an initial realization, you know, recognition, like the Dzogchen uh, tradition talks about, recognition, which is the first glimpse, then realization, which is realizing, oh, this isn't a glimpse I'm having. 
this is who I am. This is real. I realize this is the the seeker never was. You know that is a realization. Then there's abiding, which means it starts to stabilize. Uh, then there's expression, the ability to express from that being and live this life, so that we don't have to just go into a meditation or satsang or uh, you know state of pure awareness, and then in order to operate in the world, come back to the ego and operate, and then go back and come back, getting it, losing it. There's a there's a being that starts to see, and then a being that speaks and lives this life without creating an ego manager. That that becomes an unfolding that uh, doesn't usually happen right away. There's a feeling like you're doing it initially, but um, it's often not true because it's uh, there's a there's a the the true nature doesn't deepen. But there's a there's a mixing of formlessness and form that continues. That's what we're so talking true about. So na- true nature doesn't deepen. No. So in other words, false nature gets more shallow, something like it, that. It gets know? less less predominant. That's all. It gets less. Uh, you know, its habits become more in the background. They don't go away. It's not. In like other words, anything that's no thing. You know, yes. And that really doesn't appear yeah. in the bits. That's uh, right. Cannot be manipulated in any way. So That's the right. only thing we manipulate is like uh, the escape or the runaway technique. And maybe we don't run away quite as often. Run no. away meaning running in our thoughts or right. going to uh, judging our perceptions. Or That's right. Doing something else. Yeah, we don't, we don't create. Um, it's really almost like the creating of the part of the, the ego point of view. It's like we can still like, um, you know, th- you know as, as the being, we can use thought as a beautiful, it becomes like a beautiful tool and a beautiful... Like, oh, let me, you know, think about what I might do tomorrow. And you can be thinking and not losing, uh, losing beingness or awareness. You can, and even when there's like an absorption. And you, and you can't do that. It you just can't. Starts to happen. It just starts to happen. That's right. Yeah, know, That's the spontaneous. Don't, try, don't plan on doing that. That's right. You know? No, you can't. That's don't try this at home. Finder, right? You know, don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. Please. You can't do that. Right. <laughs> I mean, this is all. Now I'm talking about the kind of unfolding, which yeah. is is in the, a way that's it, an end game, right? And like, well, I it's mean, a, it's it, just it's just trying to put a map. It's trying to say that yeah. that you know, having read all these different um, teachings, having interviewed and talked to a lot of people, because in some ways, you know, that's been one of my interests. Is like, what is this thing? How does it seem to unfold? People seem to think it's you know they're describing it this way, but then there's ten people who are describing it. And they're saying it's this, this one says it's that, this one says it's that. But they have these principles that are the same. Even though they're, they're, they, they're describing it as if it, you know, using a little different language. Uh, there, there's the same principles of almost like human beings in different cultures would call things different terms. But th- there seems to be a, a clear sense that there is this natural, almost human... Uh, capability for awakening as like a stage of human development. Or, yeah. You know, I mean, okay, let's say a uh, hundred people see a map. Yeah. Some it's going to serve. Mm-hmm. Some are lost in a little section of town and they need the map, you know, and yes. others are going to make it uh, a real seeking, you know, seeking. Yes. Is gonna, I, mean, I got this map now and I can really seek. Yes. Not, they're not saying that, but in other words, I mean, just by describing an end game or a state or something, somebody wants it. Yes. Yeah. So, so, so then a lot of people are going to misuse the map. That's right. Yes. Right? And, and they're going to get confused by the map. Yes. Yes. So this this is the this is the reason why there's a certain tradition within this direct path tradition, um, the Zen, you know, more like the Zen style tradition. Say, I'm not going to tell you anything about about. I'm not going to say anything about how, what happened because I don't want you to get attached to it. Now, I think we're in a place now where we almost need the general principles being Westerners and having a sense because we're not even able to get, you know, to ABC because we can't orient ourselves uh, toward this, this, that there is something. It still seems esoteric, and we've got these other fantasies from ancient 
you know, stories and myths and descriptions. So we already have a map, a false map. So we, we have, might as well yeah. have a realer map. We might right? as well have a general yeah. map that, that's so described. So then we're map readers, you know, we, yeah. don't, we don't move without a map. <laughs> yeah, and, and we're saying, and we're putting it in perspective. We're saying, okay, this is an impressionistic map. Here's the basic principles, just like we would say, okay, basic principles of human beings growing up. Okay, we tend to go in these stages. It tends to develop this way. Here's the, some of the doors you can go through. But, you know, we still say, okay, here's, but you ready for the first part of the map? The first part of the map is, now that you've got the general feeling of that, okay? And some of the map is, it's not this, it's not that, don't look here. It, if you think it's yeah. this state of mind, that's not it. You can't understand it with the mind. The one who starts the journey cannot get there. This is on the map. Yeah. I mean, this is the, I'm describing the map. It's okay, the, those are all the cautions <laughs> on the map. But yeah. I mean, you know, a lot. Okay, that, you know, okay. So you this see, is really terrific because, like, <laughs> I've been really, really, really upset with the map. You know, and thinking that it doesn't serve enough people. That it, that's it right. actually is, uh, uh, you know, counterproductive for that's right. so many more people than it is productive. That's right. And, and then I, I've also been hating the uh, neti neti or finding right. out what you're not because that's then right. it tends like. The natural thing to do is to reject things. And That's right. How can you get anywhere by rejecting? Anyhow, by rejecting something, you're only confirming it. Yes. Because you're putting your energy into it. That's so then right. I, I've been really up, kind of like uptight with that. Yeah. So it's in some ways, part of the map is returning thought and the mind to their natural state. So they have a place. Some of it's in the beginning to say, and then as it starts, you've got to say on the map, okay, you ready? Now we're going to go to paradoxical thought okay so you got to be able to hold two thoughts in your mind and then we're going to let go of this map and we're going to go into non-conceptual knowing so the last parts of the conceptual map are the are the paradoxical statements you the seeker who's trying to get this awakening cannot find it <laughs> but it's already here it's equally available to everyone it's simple but it's not easy because the mind can't know it, um, the ego can't get there, the senses can't touch it. Only awareness can know awareness. Only this no thing can know this thing, no thing. And yet, you, when that is so, it will include everything else and it will include the senses and the mind and and they will not be separate. Okay, so that's the end of the map. Now, well, the paradox yeah. part to me sounds like you're just uh, deconstructing language and saying it because well, you're putting two languages against each other, right? And saying, let's see what what wins, explodes, the whole thing poops out, you know, and just say, well, language is not it because a, a paradox. The paradox of it is language won't hold this, basically. Well, and you could yeah. even start there, you know, because the very yes, first thing you probably should say right. is like, what you think isn't real. Yeah, there's that's nothing right. real. That anyone can be thinks, known by thought. That's right. Yeah, you know, because otherwise my thoughts are better than yours. I'm getting. I want to know the truth. That's my, right. My scriptures are that's better right. than yours, and you're wrong, and I'm right. All that you know, you could. It, that's right. You're saying the same thing. Only you're up at another level where people have that's believed right. thought all the way up, and now we're throwing two thoughts against each other and saying that's you right. can have it, but you can't have it. That's right. And so, what does that mean? And yes. then we're going to go to non-conceptual knowing, which means language crash. You yes, know. language language as the primary way of, uh, way, of, way of knowing. So we go from uh, conceptual knowing to not knowing. Unknowing, right. Yeah, exactly. then we go to unknowing. But see, here's the thing. Then the people here will say, that's it. We're done not knowing. That's it. Or let it unfold by itself. Well, I don't. my experience has it doesn't always unfold by itself there. So the not knowing... Now, the discovery of not knowing knowingness. In other words, oh my God, now, because that would be one of the guys that said, let it unfold by itself, you know. Right. In a way, I'd probably be one of those guys. Yeah. It reminds me of one time I was in India and a guy, I was interviewing people, and one guy wanted to inter interview some uh, high, someone that knew this guru, and, you know, he was convinced that this guru had three stages of enlightenment, and he right. wanted to explain it all to me. And I said, well, why don't you let me get to the first stage? I'll right. probably be better off, yeah. better equipped That's to understand right. the second stage. That's you know, right. And when I get there, I'll probably know more about the third stage. That's but right. from here, it's all just a lot of garble, right? Yes, that's right. And so then, why wouldn't it just do it by itself? Well, in some ways, it does do it by itself. It, it, because mm. as soon as you're not the self, the, all I'm pointing to there is, it is doing it. You're definitely not doing it. But... The, the thing is, it's not, it's just to not get you to, 
you could fall into a state of, of literal non-doing where you go a little too far into the pure awareness. The thing is that the, the, there is another kind of knowingness that is curious that can know itself. So it's starting to just... You know, it's what you're saying about so the that non doingness the... that you're saying falling too far into non doingness. That non doingness is a doingness. It's like doing nothing. That's right. It's, you know, it's, it's actually a doing to say, now I'm not going right. to do, you know, and that is a doing. That's you right. Know? But if you just relax and go, that's doing right. happens, right? That's right. Something like that. Yes. Because I mean, we're saying you can't do it. Because if we say the secret's yes, not you defined, can't... already we're saying you can't do it. The key... So then let it yeah. happen by itself in a way is right. what we're saying, right? Yes. The but, seeker is yeah. not the finder. That's let it happen by itself, isn't it? Um, no, not exactly. See, here's the thing. It's, it's when you say you can't do it, the, the point is you, not, not do. Not can't do, huh? No, yeah, not can't do. And, and people kind of keep, it's you, not, not can't do. Yeah, that's, I got it. Okay. <laughs> that's, 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 that's been the problem. It's like people hear it and they like, once they feel like, oh, I realize oh, yeah. I can't do it. So it's can't can, do. They think Therefore, it can't you, be done, right? That's right. No, Therefore, it's it going to be, be done, done right? <laughs> it, it, can, it can be done. You can't do it. But it can be done. Not you can't do it. Therefore, do nothing. That's the other linear. That's the, that's the linear thing. Oh, yeah. Thing. No kidding. Right on. You get caught there. So then, you know, then, then you're either caught in, once you realize you can't do it. It's like, okay, therefore, do nothing. Uh, just let it happen. You know, no. Doing the where the the doing the doing can know can know it. I mean, there, I, this is, can't be said, but this is where it can't be said. But uh, the 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 awareness which is here already knows itself. So then then the pointing begins. Then the different doorways. Um, the then I I describe often the, the resting methods or the no method methods. Right. Or the unhooking and looking methods, which are like inquiry. Mm -hmm. and, and those can be divided into ways of unhooking awareness from the mind. Like, for instance, I mean, people could even try this now. This is a more of a looking or Mahamudra or a inquiry method. It's just you realize that awareness is attached or identified with the mind and thoughts. Sounds are coming in, thoughts, visual, and we're orienting this way. So if you just unhook awareness from the mind just have it step back and drop below your neck and then let it notice the awareness that's inside and the aliveness and then don't go up to thought don't go down to sleep don't go to the past or the future just let awareness be aware of awareness and aliveness and then just let that curiosity of awareness start to kind of know without using information, without orienting by thought, let it start to show itself as what's aware, what's knowing, but you're just waiting, you're surrendering, waiting, surrendering, letting be, and you just see whether some new kind of knowing just starts to show itself just because you're not doing the other thing. You're breaking the habit of going to the mind, and what do you find? In other words, we go to the knowing field. Yeah. Good. That's a great way of saying it. See, you got your own language. That's as good as any. That's great. That's your language. Perfect. And you can know that field, and you can well, just what return. You, yeah. You know? That's it. In fact, anytime you want to answer, you can go to the knowing field. That's it. That's, how te that's what teachable and learnable means. That's what it means. It means... Just as you said, I mean, there's everyone who finds that uses a different language for it. So I can use, I'll use your language now. So awareness can go not only to awareness, but awareness plus aliveness that knows. And the key is just, just you know, just like, um, uh, you know, just don't go to thought, to orient. Just see if there isn't, see if awareness, see, aware, as soon as you unhook, you're not doing it anymore. Awareness is now looking. To awareness, to the knowing field, and the new kind of knowing starts showing up, right? Yeah, you get blasts of love too, like you get and the blasts love. of like it just gets real hot and warm. And yes, <gasps> yeah. So, wanna, so <gasps> that's right. You want to just grab it. <gasps> yeah, and you just feel that. See that? Feel the impulse to grab, but just let that Not happen. Not grab so much, yeah. but like you know, embrace, embrace. What yes, it's called. yes, yeah. So you feel that. That's the natural. You know what is called you know, the connection or non-separation or love or unity or sometimes people, 
you know, that's, that dimension is what is known by the knowing field that is non-conceptual and yet is here. And as you said, you can return anytime. And then from there, you can speak and walk and talk. And then you lose it. And then you realize you lost it. And then you know how to return. And then you return. And then, you, then the knowing field knows itself. You're not doing it. Awareness, as soon as awareness is unhooked from thought, it's no longer you doing it. Now it's awareness that's looking to awareness. And, and when it finds it, it realizes there's not two awarenesses, there's not three awarenesses. It's totally cool. You know? what do you now think? I get it.